Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Today in this video, we'll go through the first impression, what you're gonna see when you install Linux Mint. You're getting the welcome screen. We're gonna go through this welcome screen and I'll show you what you get in when you just first install Linux Mint. So you can know what to expect from Linux Mint and how it looks, what you can customize as far as graphic user interface, what you can change and other things that you can do. So let's get started. And before we start, if you're new to the channel, please take a second to subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. I'm gonna have more Linux videos on this channel, so make sure to subscribe. Also, if you find this video helpful, give it a like, I appreciate it very much. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, when you're gonna start Linux Mint for the first time, it's gonna take you to the welcome screen and you can choose to show this dialog every startup. If you don't wanna go through it right away, you can look at it later. But if you have already set up everything, just go ahead and untick the box and close the window. Okay, so let's go through the first step. This is a pretty cool welcome window, which gives you a lot of options to customize. So you can set up Linux Mint the way you want it before you actually start using it. The first thing you can customize is desktop colors. As they say over here, you can make yourself at home. So you can choose your favorite colors that you prefer and choose the light or dark desktop theme. So this is the first customization you can do. The next thing you can customize is gonna be the panel layout. If you prefer traditional panel layout where you have a longer bars and you have the name of the window written on the bar itself, then go ahead and choose the small and traditional window list. If you prefer the modern one where you only see the icons, you can choose the large panel with group windows and a small system tray. Myself, I don't like the modern large panel because I like to see the name of the window on the bottom, so I usually choose traditional. And if you're using a lot of windows of the same kind, it will group them anyway. So you're gonna see the icons. If you wanna have the modern look, then go ahead and choose the modern one. The next step is gonna be the system snapshots. What it is, it's basically like Windows restore point. If something breaks, if you get installed new software, new drivers, and something doesn't work, well, then you can use the snapshots to recover your system. Usually Linux is pretty safe because all the software get verified and you download it from the software repositories that are verified by Linux users. But sometimes you can run into a need of recovering your Linux system. For this situation, you need to set up snapshots that will allow your system to be recovered in a few minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and click launch. It's gonna ask you for your password. And this is the good thing about Linux. It is very safe. It always asks you for the password to perform any action. So once you enter your password, you can select the type of the snapshot. We're just gonna select the default one, our sync, and then click next. It's gonna estimate the system size. It shows you all of your disk and the disk where your system is installed. So let's go ahead and choose the partition where our Linux Mint is installed and then press next. And here you can choose the levels of snapshots. So you can choose to do them monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, or every boot time. So I'm just gonna choose three snapshots daily. I think this is gonna be enough. And keep in mind that the old snapshots are gonna be automatically removed. So it's not gonna overload your hard drive or your SSD drive because they will be automatically wiped out and you don't even have to worry about it. So then go ahead and press next. Then on the next step, use your home directories, just keep everything the same and press next. Now the setup is complete, you can click finish and it also gives you a few good tips on what to do. You can save your snapshot to the external drive. This way you can format the OS and still have the snapshot saved. The snapshot is going to be created automatically so you don't have to worry about it and the old ones will be removed as well. So the system can be rolled back to the previous date by restoring a snapshot. All right, so let's go ahead and close this window. And we get in the update manager automatically pops up here. It says welcome to the update manager. So it can install secure updates, software updates and system snapshots. So we can do it automatically. Let's go ahead and just press OK. It also tells you that the new version of update manager is available. Enter your password again to authenticate this action. It's going to connect to the server and start downloading package files. So these are all the updates that are available. We can just click install updates and it should start installing all of the updates. It also tells us that this update will trigger additional changes. Then it also asks us for the password again to authenticate this action. And in case something doesn't work with an update manager, I have faced an issue where it doesn't want to update or some actions don't work. 
if your update manager is not working, go ahead and check out my other video where it says update manager can proceed. If that's the case, follow up the step in that video and it will work no problem. I'll put a link in the description as well. So this way, if you face this issue, you can resolve it pretty easy. Meanwhile, we're just going to wait until it's going to install all of the software. It's all done automatically, which is good. It basically looks like Windows. You don't have to do many different actions. But if something doesn't work, then you're going to have to go through additional steps. All right, the installation is finished. It's going to require a reboot, but we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to go and finish our first impression with this welcome screen. So go ahead and close the snapshot window. The next thing you can do is check out the driver manager. Keep in mind, you can access all of these accessories later through the start menu. But if you want to do that right now, just click on launch, enter the password, press authenticate. It's going to look for hardware drivers and it will show you additional drivers that you might want to install. And it gives you different versions of driver for the same device. As you can see, this GeForce GTX 980 Ti has a lot of different graphic card drivers. So we're just going to choose the recommended one. And then also the Wi-Fi adapter has an additional driver. So we're going to click apply changes and graphic card drivers and Wi-Fi adapter drivers. Most of the time they are proprietary and there could be some issues if you don't download them properly. Because if you don't have the Wi-Fi driver, your Wi-Fi internet is not going to work. If you have the wrong graphic card driver, then you might get issues with a graphical user interface. Like it could be the wrong screen resolution or overall experience could be just slow. So always try to download the latest proprietary driver this way you will make sure that your system is working smooth and with no issues all right so we have already checked the update manager before so let's go ahead and look at the system settings and i think this is one of the coolest thing actually this is really huge section i think i can make another video just on its own about this system settings but let's just quickly go through this in this video and see what we can change here of course, you can change different backgrounds. As you can see, there are quite a few different cool Linux background if you like a different one. So they have included quite a few of different backgrounds. There are totally dark. There are green ones if you like the green color. So this is Linux Mint. You can also go and change to different versions of Linux. As you can see, Uliana, Ulisa, Uma, and Una, they all have different wallpapers saved. So you can change that wallpaper as you like. In the settings, you can also choose to play backgrounds as a slideshow. You can change picture aspect ratio and you can also select the background color. All right, let's see what else we can modify here and what else we can customize. As you can see, there are a variety of different things you can customize in preferences and appearance. Let's check out the effects. You can choose many different desktop effects such as session startup animation, fade FX, desktop FX, window FX, and many more. Then you can also select different phones, different themes, the window borders, icons. As you can see, there are very many different color icons. You can choose the controls the way you like it. This is a lot of customization, I can tell. Then you can choose the mouse pointer, the desktop. Man, there is a lot of customization you can do in Linux. If we go through every setting, it's probably going to be an hour long video or I should say maybe a two hour long video. So we're not going to go through them all like you can just play around and change everything you like. There is also some hardware programs. As you can see, you can work with disk, Bluetooth, graphic, keyboard, system. There's also some administration programs. So, yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do. But let's go ahead and continue exploring our welcome screen. So let's check out the software manager. This is where you can get over 60,000 applications. Linux Mint is one of the best Linux operating systems as far as programs go because they do have a big software repositories, one of the biggest, same as Ubuntu. So if you want to have a lot of different programs, you can just go ahead and use Linux. Then you're going to have all the programs that you need for daily use. But if you don't find all the programs that you need, of course, you can install Linux Mint alongside with other operating system, for example, Windows 10, and then you can run them both on the same computer. I'm going to have a video about how to do that. So make sure to check out this video if you want to have Linux Mint installed alongside with Windows 10 or other operating system. I'm going to put a link in the description and one in the upper right corner once the video is out. So make sure to subscribe. And another thing you can look at is firewall. This will control and monitor the network traffic. So as you can see, you can change different profiles. 
you can turn it on or off. You can control both incoming and outgoing traffic. And it even gives you some tips on how to use it. So yeah, pretty cool. So as you can see, this is a very handy welcome screen, which gives you a lot of options to look for when you first start Linux Mint. So I think this is one of the best Linux based operating systems you can get. It is most Windows like looking operating system. So you don't need to spend too much time to get used to it. It has big software repositories. It's very stable and it's free. Yeah, this is it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, of course, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below. And if you have ideas on what next Linux video you want me to make, drop it down in the comment section below and I will try to make that video as soon as possible. All right, guys, I hope you have a nice day. See you soon. Bye-bye.